At age six, I was born without a face. Uh, ooh, Gemini. We were just talking about that. Oh, yeah, because I have a Gemini story. Well, that's the sell it. Uh, sh sh this is a good time for a story. Mm hmm. This is a classic tale. So, um. As we've said before, mm -hmm. it's very ironic that I play a character who's like the world's fucking sexiest lover and like all about the ladies, which is also true. I mean, like in real life, like, didn't didn't we make that statement? Like the the line between actual me and Danny Sexbang is fucking getting thinner and thinner by the day. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, it, yeah. So, but... I got off to a slow start. I was a bit of a late bloomer. And, um, I was a virgin until- Yeah, now you can suck up bears. Just- Oh, wait, were those well, frogs? What I'm aiming for right now is, uh, twins, because I'm doing Gemini. Oh. So, the only thing that counts is getting two of something. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. This game. So clever. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I was a virgin until I was 23. Because I was in love with one girl, and it didn't... Get out of yeah. town! It... Get right the fuck out of town! I was waiting... Take a goddamn train out of town! I was gonna... I know, I was, I was letting you... <laughs> I was letting you that time. Okay. I was, um... I was waiting for this one girl who I was super in love with, and it, it didn't end up happening. Um... So... She got married when I was, like, 21, maybe? Mm hmm And, uh... And... So I like had one year of just like super depression. I was like, oh, I listen to Radiohead all the time. Draw the shades closed. But then I had another year where I just bit a virgin and I felt ready to. I was just like, get this thing out of me. You know, like I'm ready. <laughs> like a fuck, like aliens. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, my friend, uh, I don't know if I should use the real names. Let's say my friend Brendan um, was dating a girl. Uh, this was when I was living in North Jersey. And he was dating a girl uh, who worked at a strip club just outside of Philadelphia. So about two hours away. Mm -hmm. And um, I, he, he doesn't have a license. So um, it was at a time in my life when I was a heavy pot smoker. And he was like, how about this? Um, I will buy you weed if you will drive me down uh, to see my girlfriend at the strip club. Did I mention she was a stripper? Yes. Okay. Yes, good. you did. Yes. So we would do this. We would, I would, I would roll roll up a joint or something, and we would take these like stony rides down to um, down to the strip club in in South Jersey, right outside of Philly, and uh, you know we just hang out and talk, and I. Then when we got there, he would, um, god, they're so disturbing when they're huge like that. <laughs> um, Won't be huge for long, son. Yeah. He would go, uh, and spend time with her in the champagne room, where the romance happens. Uh -huh. And I would just, like, hang out at the bar and drink Cokes and watch TV or whatever. And, um... No, you were into Coke, dude. No. No, you were into weed. But... Delicious Cokes. Delicious Coca-Colas. Oh. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a hard drug guy. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> so, I would just hang out there for, like, hours, um, and, like, watch TV or whatever, and, like, talk to the dancers, because, like, they would come around, and they'd be like, do you want a lap dance? And I was like, oh, no thanks, and, you know, like... After doing that for like three weeks, they were like, why are you here? <laughs> and then like we just started talking and like we became friends. Uh, and it was kind of fucked up actually, because they were like, you're so nice and respectful. Like you never try to grab us or anything. I was like, I think you need to create a higher floor standard of what you consider respectful. <laughs> um, but like, so one of them, uh, was named Gemini. Possibly not her real name. And, um... <laughs> and, uh, I, I think you, you need to rethink your standards on per people's names. Yeah, you're possibly right. Because that's, that's offensive. That's just, <laughs> that's just downright After offensive. the Freebert debacle of yeah, 1996. That's, that's fucked up, man. I agree. I agree. Um, so she, uh... So we, she, she became my best friend there, and we talked for a while. And then just one day... She was like, do you want to go in the back room and have sex? 
And I was like, what? Uh, uh, what? what? <laughs> so, that, that can happen? And I had like, you know, I was high at the time and like, I just really had like this moment of like, oh my God. Well, you were high your first time? No, no, I didn't do it. I didn't oh, do it. Oh. Um, I was high when I was debating whether or not to do it. And I just couldn't. <laughs> yeah. That's funny because I can imagine you like somebody being like, you said no? What are you, high? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, actually I was. As a matter of fact, I was extremely high, thank you. <laughs> well, no, I mean, she was, she was really nice and she was pretty, but like, I couldn't... Listen, <laughs> when you wait that long to have sex, you're like, fuck. It, at this point, it really might as well be with someone special, you know? Okay. And, uh... She was special. She, she was... She was my friend, yeah. Friend. But, uh... She said you were sweet and kind. Well, my fear was realized, because I, I told her no thank you. Um, like, I just wanted to get to know her better. And she was like, whatever. You know, she just, like, <laughs> she just didn't care. Um, and then I went back the next week when I drove Brendan. Uh, sorry, Barry, make that Brendan. Uh, <laughs> where I drove Brendan there. And, um... And, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so I, I, I was like, where's Gemini? And the bartender was like, oh, uh, she's not working here anymore. And I was like, really? That's kind of abrupt. And they were like, yeah, she was arrested for prostitution. <laughs> oh. And I was like, oh, okay. So, and that was my other secret fear. Like, I didn't know she was a prostitute, but, like, you never want to run the risk of your first time, like, you finish, and like, you're just lying there, and you're like, ah, oh, that was so awesome, and then the girl like rolls over, and she's like, that'll be five hundred dollars, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to run the risk of your first time also being your last time. Yeah. Oh, solid point. Because your your wiener itches too much. Right. To yes. put it anywhere else. There's there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dick safety precautions that a young man must take. Uh, out of respect for his future partners. Mm -hmm. um, so I waited, and my first time ended up being with uh, a good friend of mine, and she was awesome, and that was awesome, and I'm glad. And uh, and then and and so that's my that's my tale. And yeah, Gemini turned out not to be her real name. It was Antoinette. <laughs> wow, you yeah. wouldn't think. Yeah, go figure. You but think. that was my Gemini story. I hope you enjoyed it. I didn't. Um. <laughs> no, thank you for sharing. That's a very personal story. You know what? Uh, we've gotten more personal on this show. Yeah. So. Steep. Schneef. Schneef to bloop. Hey, you know what? Huh? Speaking of dreams, I had a really nice dream last night. What was your dream? I, I had a dream that, like... I could, I found a phone, like an old rotary phone. Uh -huh. Are you playing with your feet right no. now? No. I'm about to tell a semi-sad story. I'm playing with a foot. I, um, I, I dreamt, I found like this rotary phone and you could listen to like old conversations on it. Uh-huh. And I like heard like a conversation I had like with my granddad oh. uh, when I was like a teenager. Oh man. I was like, oh, it's so cool to that's, hear his voice again. It's like, heavy. Yeah, it was super wild. But like I woke up and I was like, yay, that was nice. Cause I never have nice dreams. I have really? like, yeah, I usually have no dreams. And, oh. and then like I'll occasionally, if I'm stressed, I'll have like something where I'm being chased, you know? Oh, that's not cool. Yeah, it's the worst. But I think it's because I quit my day job yesterday. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it won't be yesterday when this airs, but like, um, I, I quit my day job because we got to a point where uh, we can, I can do, you know, Game Grumps and Ninja Sex Party and Star Bomb uh, full time and, and pay my bills and live. And uh, it's fucking amazing. And walking out of that place was the best because A, they gave me a, a slow 80s applause clap. Really? Yeah, yeah. I started walking out, and uh, my buddy was like, <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone like joined in. It was really, really special. And uh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And as I walked you didn't out, tell me that. Well, I'm telling you now. Like, and the coolest thing about it was realizing that, like, that the moment I walked out of walked out of that place, 
like into the fucking California sunshine. Mm -hmm. It was the first moment where like, you know, however many years out of college, more than a decade, like I finally reached a point where I can do like fun shit and music for a living full time. Yeah. Like, oh my God. I never thought I'd get there. It's... So this is fun to you? This is super fun. Are you not having a good time? <laughs> It's probably funny now. It's probably not. Really? It probably wasn't funny then. <laughs> Do you not like Martin Lawrence? I'm not a fan. Oh, okay. I know he's like, what you talking about? The, I'm Martin Lawrence! Yeah. And, he, then, and then he, uh... He's a very, like, snibbledy dibbledy dabbledy doo yeah. like, kind of humor. And then he, and then he, he ran out into the, the road with a gun. Yeah, he did do that! Yeah. I wonder if he, he, he was probably they're, just... They're, they're trying to kill me. High on cocaine. Something like that. I don't know, Dave Chappelle talks about it as if it's, like, the industry made him do it. Like a, like a nervous breakdown yeah. kind of thing? I can understand that. Yeah. Because, dude, we feel, we feel stress sometimes from, like, fame, and we're not really that famous, yeah, you know? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, like... So if you're on, my in! And you, like, walk down the street, and you're like, could I get a, could I get some chips? And then they're like, sure thing! My in! Yeah. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right, all right. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd really want to be, like, five levels of fame higher, you know? Oh, like, sure. it, that, that really has to fuck with you. Oh, yeah. It, it's like, um... When you see like homeless people on the street, you're supposed to just be like, I'm sorry, I, I I can't help you or something like that, because then that's treating them like a human. Right. If you just ignore them, then they start to get they start to get like a weird complex where they can just like Do anything? Yeah, they kinda just can fuck with people. Right. And they and that's when they go crazy. And they're all like, oh, I, love, I, love, I, love, I love it with raisins <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't understand what the connecting thread was there. Um, oh, so if you're, like, super famous, and then people just start treating you not like a human, you start to go crazy. Oh, it. oh, oh, yeah. yes, that makes sense. Ugh. Shit. Yeah, I mean, like, I certainly fucking appreciate it a lot more when people come up to me and they're just like, Hey, man, I like what you do. Yeah. As opposed to, like, YOU ARE A GOD! Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm not, I'm just a guy. Yeah, when they're just like... Hey man, uh, I know you're busy. Just don't want to take up your time. Just want to tell you I like your stuff. Yeah. And they're like, all right, take it easy. That man. is all yeah. we want to hear. That is so nice to hear. It's that, so appreciated. Ugh. You're dead. Yeah, that fucking brightens my day. Yeah, it's super. We'll nice. we'll be talking about you for like the next an hour about how cool you were. Yeah. Like that guy, just wow. But if you come, really knows how to do it. Yeah. But if you come up to me and you're just like, ah, can I touch your face? I just want to be close to your face. <laughs> like that shit's weird. I remember there was this one guy. I was I was at a. Ah, not a, my best effort. <laughs> I have an moms. air pocket in my fat fat gut. <laughs> so, so anyway, I was at a con and uh, fuck, come yeah, on, dude. They really fucking like at the up diagonal. They really move fast. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. I was at a con. Right. I was behind the booth. Okay. And like, you know, meeting people all day and there's all kinds of people that you meet. But right. there's this one guy who just, who could only talk to me in quotes. Oh boy. And like, it, it, it was the first time that I was like completely speechless. <laughs> because it was so weird. Yeah, because like, I've gotten used to talking to people if they don't know what to say and if they're nervous or right. whatever. So I'm just like, hey, you know, uh, cool shirt, you know, whatever. But like, this guy was just like, <laughs> yo, blat blat that shit. And I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> so, so man, like, how's the con going? And he's like, <laughs> go, go, go sneak that. Um, but, uh, all right. uh, my fucking lips. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> fucking lips. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> yeah, fu fucking lips. <laughs> I was like, dude. I have no idea what to say to you, man. <laughs> yeah, you're weirding me out. <laughs> So yeah, that yeah. Because I, usually, if they if they if they're like quoting a thing, then that means they want you to say it, and then they're like, yeah. But like, I did it, and then he right. was just still like, let's keep going with this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, it, was, it was very strange. It is it is strange, and it's especially strange because like we we were not like famous child actors or anything. Like we had incredibly long stretches of our lives where nobody knew who we were. Or you know? cared. Yeah, or cared, and we we just. Developed as normal people, so like. Plus, I have social anxieties. So do you like, really? Yeah. So like, all of a sudden, people like want to talk to me, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know <laughs> that's, how. That's interesting. <laughs> so, right, would you would you consider yourself like an introvert? Shit. Yes, absolutely. Really? Very much so. See, that's I'm the opposite. 
Yeah, I, I just can't do it. I don't know. So let oh, That's let it. that be a lesson to all you out there. Chicken. If you see me and Aaron at a con, assault me first <laughs> and create a buffer, and then you can approach Aaron. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm I, just I've, kidding. I've, I've I've gotten very good at being able to like talk to people in a con setting. Right. Because there's there's a there's a lot you can talk about and there's a lot you can assume that you have in common with them. Right. Um, but like, if I'm at like a party or something, like, I, I'm, I'm just fucking like, <sighs> wow. I am a wallflower to the extreme. That's so interesting, dude. It's like, I don't know what to say to these people. I just, yeah. So you know, Jarnst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know Jarnst. Jarnst. <laughs> He's who threw this party, yes. That was super fun. Hilarious. Oh man, it made me laugh like no other situation makes me laugh. I killed a thing. Um. Uh. You want to expound on that in court? Rather not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd love to discuss it, or as I refer to, Exhibit A. <laughs> Exhibit B, please don't put me in jail. <laughs> Exhibit C, please don't put me in jail. Pretty please. Exhibit C, because wait, in jail, wait. there are gentlemen there who won't take pretty please for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> pretty please. <laughs> guys, guys, come on, guys, 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 just can you, guys. Please don't touch my butt like that. Please don't, guys. Please. Oh, no, no. Oh, it hurts. Yikes. I don't no. want to go to jail. No. You've never been in jail, right? No. Okay. I'm, Dude, I'm a fucking... I'm a vanillaite. I was in... A, I was not in jail. Uh-oh. <laughs> I was not in a sp specific thing called jail. Okay. I was locked up in a cell... Is that a crazy little thing called jail? For one... For a few hours, um, my friends and I were. Oh. I'm sorry. When you started the story, it was. Like, I know. I was locked in jail for one crazy night. <laughs> that was one crazy Yom Kippur. Ow! <laughs> I yeah. So I was 18, and my friends and I were walking down the street, and we were gonna have a little party. We were gonna have a little. Hey, we're in college now, and we're big guys party. And there was going to be beer there. Mm -hmm. Because we were adults. We were like, 18, we can drink beer. And um, <laughs> so we... I was under the impression that you could carry alcohol down the street as long as it was in a closed container. Because I was a waiter at the time, and I'd carry wine around from table to table, and I'm like, that's an open container, and I'm just carrying alcohol around. Mm. What's the problem? I thought it was the consuming that was the problem. So, uh... We got this kid, uh, kid, he was like 22, to essentially like buy us like a bunch of beer. And then it's just like five underage kids walking with crates of beers down the street in broad daylight on Commonwealth Avenue in Boston. And like these cops just like pull up next to us and they're like, ah, uh, you boys, uh, fucking serious? Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. Yeah. He was like, uh, how old are you? And I was like, uh, Dude. Like, I just didn't, I didn't want to lie to him. I was like, that'll get worse. Um, so we all handed out IDs. Wait, is 18 or 21 the drink? Uh, 21. We oh. were three years underage. Oh. Yeah, it was, th that adds a certain dimension to the story. <laughs> 18 is the drinking age in, um, many European countries. Oh, okay. Did he, like, cut you some slack because you were honest? Hell no! Oh. Well, they, they actually got to like us a lot. Because they, 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 oh, sweet, freeze ray. Yeah. They locked us up, and uh, then they were, like, interrogating us. Um, but, like, there, there were a couple of funny things. They just thought, like, they could tell that we were, like, good kids and, like, we weren't trying to hurt anybody. Um, and we kept making them laugh. Not intentionally, but, like, this was before... I'm assuming they have, like, computerized thumbprint things now. Uh -huh. uh, but this was back when they were still using, like, the ink and, like on paper, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And so like, they, they're taking our fingerprints and they do my thumb and you have to like roll it across. And because my thumb is so fucking huge, it like rolls right off the page and like inks up the table. <laughs> oh my and God. And they're like, Jimmy, get over here. You gotta see this kid's thumbs. <laughs> they're like E.T. thumbs or something. <laughs> E.T. thumbs. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. So they all had a good laugh about that. Uh, great guffaw. Yeah, and also the holding cell that there were too many of us. There were like six of us. And the holding cell that uh, they had us in um, couldn't hold us all. So I ended up 
they were like, does anyone mind being handcuffed to a desk? And I was like, um, and he was like, cool, you. <laughs> and so, uh, they handcuffed me to a desk, but like it was at an awkward angle. So my hand was like turning purple, like all the circulation was cut off. But I didn't want to say anything because I was all scared and nervous. So they come over and like my hand is like bloated and purple. <laughs> and they're like, son, your uh, hand all right there? And I'm like, I don't know, officer. <laughs> And uh, he was like, if I uncuff you, are you going to do anything stupid? And I was like, other than cry, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you were not that sassy yeah, as a fucking 18-year-old. No, 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 I was just like, no, sir. <laughs> and, um, and so, like, they let me go and we didn't do anything. And then, and then we ended up being really cool. We had a fun night with the cops and then they let us go. Um, and uh, we went to court. And uh, the judge could also see that we were just, like, dumb kids like who didn't mean any harm and so like i didn't own a tie at that point so like i was the only guy like everyone else dressed up in a suit and tie and uh i just had a nice sweater i was like i got a nice sweater on it'll be fine you know <laughs> and so like the judge is like what do you boys want to be when you grow up and like my friend was like i want to be a doctor another one was like i want to be a lawyer and I was like, I want to be a musician. And he was like, of course, the one without the tie. <laughs> Did he really say that? He really said that. <laughs> uh, that will stick with me forever. He was a cool judge. And he was like, just don't, like, this could easily go on your record forever, but I'm going to strike it from your record and don't, just don't be stupid for the rest of your life. We were like, you got it. And now I'm stupid for a living, but stupid within the legal limits of the law. Well, ain't that a story? That's just a pickled peach. Yeah, ain't that a story that leads us right to the next time on Game Oh, come on, man. I want to hear more of your crazy stories. Oh, dude, I'm not going anywhere. I mean, we're just going to start the next episode. Oh, that's right. Cool. So, <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God in heaven! Okay. Rico cleans my windows. God, look at how happy that water is. I know. And how unhappy that water is. Yeah, I know. Did you ever play Wave Runner? I think that's what it was you mean called. Wave Race 64? Maybe that's what it is. Like, yeah. I think that's it. Where, where you're on, like, jet skis yeah, and you're. That's oh, wave dude. Race. You're feeling. Ugh, such a good fucking summertime game. Oh, I love Wave Race. I think that's what made me like my, like, beach setting. Yeah. Whenever there's, like, a beach setting, I'm like, oh, it makes me so happy. Yeah, I know. I have such really good memories. Fun fact about that game. Lay it on me. Um, my copy of it was stolen. What? Yeah. I, I, so That's like, not a fun fact at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fact. When I was a when I was a child, wait, what's the mission here? I gotta pay more attention. Glo uh, breaks out. Okay, so okay. blooper blooper. I think he's up here. Cool. Um, what was I saying? Uh, someone stole your wave race. Oh, I stole the wave race. What? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, was that not clear? Yeah. No. Um. So yeah, I was like a poor kid growing up, so I never, you know, it's like, I had like one video game for the N64. Right. Um, and then this kid like brought his copy of Wave Race, and, and his like backpack was open. Right. And I just fucking ganked it straight up. Oh no! And then, Dude. and then he was like showing it off and shit, and then, and then like later, <laughs> oh my god, it's such a douchey thing. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't want to say your name, but I'm sorry. Right. Um... I, 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 like, started showing it off, too. Oh, God. I was like, check out my copy of Wave Race. He was like, he was like, hey, uh... Oh, God. I can't find my copy of Wave Race. Like, does... Is that one, like... It's does it just, like, happen to be mine? It's and weird I was, that it has my initials on it. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, it's totally my copy. And he was like, oh, oh okay. Oh, God. That's so sad. I know, I'm sorry. How old were you? God, that was... It was, like... Was it elementary school? I think I think like, it was. This was six days ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel so bad about it now. I just Oh yeah. yeah. No, like I got um shamed into never stealing anything like at like four years old. Cause um my I was in an airport and I wanted to buy this like grape flavored chapstick. It'll work. Um Yeah, so I, there was just this chapstick in an airport that I totally wanted, and my mom was like, no, we're not getting that for whatever reason. And I was like, I, so I just stole it and then like pretended to find it like underneath the chair like later at a different airport I was like wow here's that thing I wanted that's weird and my mom was just like you suck <laughs> 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 she did I mean she was cool about it but she she just like was very unimpressed like in the way parents get when they know they want like 
when they want you to know that they're unhappy with you. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not going to say it out loud, but you know you fucked up. And I never stole anything <laughs> after that. Wow. Yeah, my Oh, just, just the guilt my, alone made oh, you... Oh, dude, Jewish guilt. Fucking, that'll squash a career in criminality faster than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Jewish guilt. Oh, it's powerful. <laughs> well, would she just, like, she just give you the eye for the rest of the day She's or like, something? Well, okay, I hope you enjoy that chapstick. I mean, you earned it. Like, oh, <laughs> God! You earned it. <laughs> so bad. Oh, uh, that's funny. Twice as much money. <laughs> you just, like, make a profit. <laughs> Well, that'd be awesome. It's like K-Pax. You just- we just keep selling each other shit I at a better price. Once. I what, did that once. What do you mean? I sold shit back to the company that sold it to me for like three times the price. What? What was the- I don't know if I ever told this story I gave girls. You might as well. Alright. It's too late now. This is one of my darkest times in US history. Oh, shit. I- <laughs> I was very poor. Uh-huh. Um, I- I, li I worked at fucking Disney World. Right. And, uh... Apparently, no, actually, I didn't. Well, anyway, um, so here's the deal Toys R Us was selling Elite Beat Agents on sale. Elite Beat? Elite Beat Agents. I don't know it's what a, those are. It's a Nintendo DS game. Oh, okay. Um, it was selling that on sale for $7 because they had like a billion of them. So I bought a bunch of them. Okay. And Walmart was still selling them for $30 a piece. Right. Walmart has a very lenient return policy, especially for Walmarts in very nice areas. Oh. So, if you go in with three items at a time, uh, because it has to be under $100. Right. Uh, you can just be like, I bought these and I don't want them. And wow. Like, Do you have the receipt? And it's like, no. And they're like, well, all right. <laughs> but, but it has to be a nice Walmart. It can't be like in a really bad neighborhood. Okay. Um, they'll just give you money. Wow. So... There you go. Dude. Yeah, but- well, and I, I can't believe I, you take advantage of a totally innocent, enormous corporation <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, was, I was very- I was in a really shitty place. I didn't make like, any money, and I was like, this is- this is- I bought food. You fucking- That's what, <laughs> that's what I did, uh, I bought food so I could live. Unbelievable. Yeah. I swear to God, if Walmart goes out of business in the next 10 to 15 <laughs> years, I'm blaming you. <laughs> fucking I, scamming them out I, of a hundred dollars. <laughs> I appreciate the, because I, I I still like feel really like. You should go right over here. to their house and just be like, Mister and Mrs. Mart. <laughs> <laughs> like when I was eighteen. I, yeah, I'll I'll stand next to you like the angry parent. Like you know what you did. <laughs> Apologize. Tell, tell them. To, oh, tell dude, them you can get them. You can grab them. Yeah, I can grab them. Okay, do Check it. Yo, it's dig time. Just beat on them a little bit. So, yep, yeah, that that that's my that's my story, man. I love it. It's really funny. I did a ton of that shit with Disney too, but that's a that's a whole nother Yeah, that's a story we won't tell because we like Disney. That's a whole nother game. That's a whole nother jam. Oh man. I'm trying to think if I ever did stuff like that. Did you ever kill a man? Yes! Alright. Uh Kevin, go ahead and edit that so that he <laughs> says yes. Yes! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> 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 Oh, you got him! You got a side pack! Congratulations! Oh, oh, man. What should I name him? Uh, Killiman. Killiman? <laughs> yeah, for Killiman. Okay. No, no. N name him Mr. Mart. <laughs> Mr. Mart? Yeah, for Walmart. Alright, cool. Done. Boy, you are all about the, like, full on, like, capital letters now. Yeah, because that's the jam. That's how the game does it. That's the jam, did you say? <laughs> yeah. Like, a hundred percent real. Guys, at home, lovelies, I'm sorry if shit's getting too real. Do you uh, want us to tone it down and be a little more hammy? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> du -du 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 -du. Welcome to Mario! I'm scared! <laughs> Play me off, Aaron! <laughs> 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 oh, man. Nah, forget it. We need to stay real. Okay. This is the 90s. People appreciate it. Got my mushroom. Oh, yeah. Do it. I need to get something else, too, because I don't feel like this mushroom's gonna do enough for me. Yeah. Have you ever, uh... You had roommates in college, right? I was never in college. Oh, near? Oh, no way. Yeah. How did you like that? Uh, it was really nice. Yeah? I didn't even finish high school. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. 
You're a high school dropout? Yeah. Oh, Aaron, am I fucking hanging out with a bad kid? <laughs> <laughs> a bad kid? Oh my god. <laughs> ah! Nice. Um, yeah. Nah, it's okay. I, I thought college was kind of meh. It's funny because, like, I... Technically, I didn't drop out. Like, my parents dropped me out. You got dropped out? Yeah. So, like, what happened was, um... On my first day of sophomore year, uh -huh. I uh, I went into school and they didn't have a curriculum for me. Right. And Whoa. I was like, why don't we... Uh, and I spent the whole day like sitting in the like library office. Yes. And um, they were like, oh, so I guess what happened was you... Oh, holy crap. <laughs> I just remembered those two. But that's it. Oh, wait. Oh. oh. I think it's I think it's this one. Oh, yeah. snap, dude. Yeah. Oh, this I don't know anymore. Nope. So, um, I, I spent the, the whole first day just sitting in an office, like, waiting for somebody to give me some fucking thing to do. Right. And then, eventually, like, at the end of the day, they were just like, Oh, you got, you got transferred to another school because you moved, and you're not in our district anymore. And I got transferred to, like, an F school. Say what? Like a, like a, like a bad kid school. That's crazy, Because I, I moved to, like the middle of nowhere instead of like the really well-to-do area that I was in before right which by the way Damn it. we were not well-to-do we just lived there for some reason right and I don't know I, I, anyway um so I was not in the good school anymore I was in the bad school Fuck. so I my mom picked me up and she was like furious and she was like, "Oh, I can't believe, ugh. And she like, I think she made a couple calls that were like, why can't my son go to the fucking good school that really? he's been going to for like four years? Was she pissed? Yeah. Was she like super pissed? Yeah, she was mom pissed. Nice. And I was just kind of like kicking rocks in the corner. Right, right. And then eventually she was just like, have you have you even learned anything in, in high school for like the, the two years you've been in it? Whoa. Uh, yeah, that whole thing is just like, don't oh, even bother shit. with it. Actually, you should make a platform. Really? Yeah, so you can like jump across. Um, she was like, have you even learned anything in the two years you've been in high school? And I was like, nah, not really. I haven't really retained anything. And she was like, you're not going to be a fucking mathematician. <laughs> just, just, just get your GED. And I was wow. like, I was like oh, okay. <laughs> Does that crazy. mean no more high school? And she was like, yeah, no more high school. And I was like, <sighs> oh man. <laughs> so that's nuts. Yeah, that's what happened. And then I got my GED, which was the easiest fucking test I've ever taken in my life. Can I come up with my own canon for how that happened? Okay. I like to imagine that your mom, who uh, has a stable of horses, rode up on horseback and was like, <laughs> Get my son out of this school! <laughs> and then your dad, like, as soon as you were walking, your dad, like, took up the bass guitar and played you off. Like, GED! Uh, that's exactly what happened. Awesome. It's actually kind of close to that, because, like, right after school, Mom had to go tend to her horses. Right. And, uh, and so I was, like, standing around in some, like, dirt pile, kicking rocks. That's why I was kicking rocks. Whoa! Because that was the only thing I had to do. You were just a bad rock-kicking kid. Yeah, dude. Awesome. I was nothing but rock kicks. Next time on Game Grumps, we fucking hang out and smoke in front of the 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Cheese it! It's the fuzz! Oh no! The heat! <laughs> the pigs! <laughs> brewery? Yeah. It's called the brewery. Nice. <laughs> and uh, they have like a service elevator because they used to be a brewery. Like a dumb waiter? Yeah, so if there's like, the, if they have to move huge shit, you just go in the service elevator that's like a million billion fucking miles wide. Oh and yeah. You have to yeah. like manually close the door or Those, else it doesn't work. When I, when I lived in my grimy. Bushwick apartment, uh, the one what with the 14 roommates and such. <laughs> I've definitely told that on Grumps before, right? You haven't, actually. Are we you never serious? told the story about the commune. That's crazy. Okay, so when I lived uh, in Brooklyn, um, I had 14 roommates. Oh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, co like, so when I lived in Bushwick, um, there were, like, seven of us. Like, I lived in Philly first, and... Uh, like, me and six of my musician friends, uh, all dudes, like, we all moved up to, uh, New York, and we got this converted loft, which was basically a fucking abandoned factory in the grimy section of Brooklyn. Um, but because it was not up to code, uh, it was super cheap. And, uh... <laughs> it, not up to code, you say? Yeah, and, well, those guys, uh, knew that, like, we would accept cheap rent because... 
they knew that we could just uh, call, you know, whoever in New York handles shutting down unfit for living situations. <laughs> so uh, it was six guys living in this big place, and then like uh, five of us got like live-in girlfriends, and uh, so that brought it up to twelve. So yeah, uh, so there were 12 of us, and as soon as there were girls there, uh, it became such a nicer place to live. Because, <laughs> like, girls, not to stereotype, but girls in general are more in tune with their environment than guys are, I think, uh, when it comes to setting up uh, and decorating a place. And um, as soon as girls lived there, suddenly, like, there was sunlight, and, like, plants and animals could live. <laughs> <laughs> animals including humans. Yeah, exactly. Um, Is this where it came out of the rich guy's house? And we just have like these massive parties and then after a party like these two guys just like stayed And then they started paying rent and I was like, okay, I guess we got new roommates <laughs> And that brought it to 14. Wow. And so yeah, it was pretty amazing um, The last thing I wanted to say about that place was uh, because it was not up to code it would flood constantly every time it rained and like our um, the people who lived on either side of us would um they just moved out because they were like fuck this like these are i can't live here and um and so like every time someone would move out we'd just knock down the walls between our apartment and theirs <laughs> and just annex that shit like puerto rico wow <laughs> yeah so our our place ended up being huge that being said I don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I live out here now. It's, it's... I'm sure it's a good life experience, though. It was super fun when I was in my 20s. Like, uh... Junkyard. Yeah, hey, come on. Ravenous junkyard Rottweilers have feelings, too. I, of course, and I'm sure they're... Well, Rottweilers are awesome dogs if you don't, like, teach them evil. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing Step with, one. Yeah. Bite the shit out of people. <laughs> yeah. That's but, it. Pit bulls, too, man. They're so fucking cool. I had a pit bull. Fuck. Did you really? Yeah. He was a pit bull Dalmatian. Aww. His name was Mikey. And he was really stupid. <laughs> oh, I caught a fucking knitter How now. How old were you? Oh, uh, that was when I lived in Florida. So this was like five years ago. Oh, okay. He, he died like two years ago or something. Yay, good story. Yeah. But what, um, what was your first dog? My first dog was named... Uh... Dead Puppy. <laughs> What? No, just just uh, applying life to art. My my first dog. Oh, what the fuck was his name? He was a greyhound. Jeez, you don't remember? And I always stepped on him. Well, I hated him. Oh no, I love greyhounds. Well, I mean, I'm sure he was cool to like an adult, but I was a kid and I I kept well, he kept sleeping like underneath a table or something, so I kept stepping on him and then yeah. he'd like try to bite me. What an asshole trying to sleep and then, and then defending himself after you injured him. <laughs> well, my parents would yell at me too, so that like made me hate it even more. Right, of course. They wouldn't be like, oh, you stupid dog, you shouldn't sleep under the table. It was like, Aaron, you're an idiot, because Aww. I probably was. My first dog was Zach, and uh, she was an Afghan. Um, like do you know Afghan hounds? Like, yeah. they're, they're like long-haired greyhounds, They're basically. really warm blankets. They're super- yes. <laughs> also that. They're beautiful. I love those dogs. And, uh, I used to go to the roller skating rink, and my mom would pick me up with Zach, and then I'd eat a Twix bar, and I'd let her lick the fucking Twixy chocolate off my fingers. And then it that, died? No, it was before I knew that chocolate killed dogs, but she loved it. Oh, okay. And apparently dogs- I, I believe the ratio is dogs have to eat one ounce of chocolate per pound that they weigh for it to be poisonous. Oh, I see. So she was big. I mean, like, maybe she was like normal dog size, but I was tiny, so she seemed like a fucking horse walking around the house. Well. It was awesome. What happened after that? She also died. Thanks for reminding me. Just like 25 years ago. <laughs> Look, man, I didn't fucking know that it died. Yeah, yeah. Well, she was seven when we got her. Like, she was like, Jesus, why the fuck did you get a seven-year-old dog? I have no, like, a guy just showed up at her house one day with her. <laughs> like, a, like a rainy day with like a black coat on. It, I think like he was just like, I love this dog, but I can't keep her anymore. Like, would you take her? And like, my mom fell in love with her instantly. That's how we got Princess Tinkles, too. She was a rescue, too. Turn, that's why I died. Oh, shit. We go, it's we go. Oh. Woo! Yay! Oh, right. oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I guess. He's all like, whoa! <laughs> Damn! Or is he just like, ah, push it! There's a pony over here! There's a pony over there! <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, I'm pretty weak, bud. <laughs> whoa! <laughs>
Damn! The Ooh. kiddie pool? Getting the party going! Getting the party going! You suck. Getting the party going! How about fuck that guy? Yeah, yeah right? I'm a little fucking surprised. All right. All right. Oh, you're going back? Yeah, dude. <laughs> fuck him. You think I'm just going to walk away from that shit? It's like, my name is the kiddie pool, and I just have my head down like... Oh, I guess the kiddie pool is good enough for me. Aw, oh, dude. That's, that's the funny thing. That's the thing I like the most about being an adult. I remember I was on, like, some kind of, like, slide thing when I was a little kid, and, like, there were older, like, high school kids going, and the, the dude running the amusement park was like, Sorry, son, you're too small to be on this. And, like, one of the douchey, like, older kids was like, Yeah, get the kids out of here. And, like, the older girls were, like, kind of giggling, and I was like, I felt, like, super, like, hot and ashamed. Oh, and yeah, sad. like, really yeah. emasculated. Yeah, just, so I, and I just, like, remember putting my head down and walking away, like, Oh, I guess. But the cool thing about being an adult is, like, now I would turn to that guy and be like, Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you suck a dick? <laughs> It's you know what about that? Yeah. Go fuck yourself! <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who's an asshole! <laughs> and the girls would still be giggling. Yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> that's that's what it is, man. People always reminisce about like how great it was to be a kid, but being a kid is fucking hard sometimes yeah. and not fun. And you get dragged a lot of places you don't want to go. You're like, oh, like all the fucking time. Yeah. Like so, I don't know. Holy shit! Oh, oh yeah. damn! Too bad. It it it's way hard to turn with him. If I had to choose three words to describe it, pretty weak, bud. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about you go fuck yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the kids <laughs> out of here. Maybe <laughs> get the kids out. Of oh god, I can still go back to that place emotionally and remember how bad I oh, felt. Oh, dude. It's like, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I've told this story before, but okay. Um, uh, my, that mo fuck. Maybe maybe the yellow is a compromise yeah, between I think speed so. and turning. Um, the uh, the moment that that is for me is that I went. Uh, there was a ice cream truck guy. Okay. And I like took change out of whatever jar was in the house to get some ice cream. Yep. And uh, I paid with like a a Canadian quarter right. instead of like a real Which look quarter. exactly like regular quarters. Yeah, exactly. They're like the same size. I just like grabbed it based on size. Right. And then he was like, I, I, you, do you know what this is? Like he was being a real jerk about it. I was like, do you see this? And I was like, what is that? And, and, and he was like, do you see this? It's, do you see what this says? Over a read, read this to me. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, like uh. Like you? Yeah. And I was like, uh, it says Canada. And he was like, yeah, yeah. This does not work. Over a fucking quarter? Yeah. What a dick. And he was like, I give this to you anyway, but don't do this again. Oh, and I was like, fuck you. Go die. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know. But as a kid, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, woo. Yeah. Shine. Fucking yellow bloops. Right. That's the way to go. See, and, and now, like, all these years later, that story gave you the power to succeed yep. at Super Mario Sunshine's bonus so, game. Fuck this guy. This guy's fucking representing yeah, the yeah. fucking... How about the water? Shit. <laughs> fuck you, stop. Yeah. It's like... Stop! Stop! I'm drowning! Stop! What if you just drowned standing up? Like... <laughs> 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 Movie? <laughs> that uh, I then I'm like... No. But, do, you, do, you, do you fight it? Yeah. That's interesting. See, like... Well, because I, like... I'm a silent crier. Mm. Like, I don't, like, I don't do the, uh, like, it just, like, tears stream down. So, like, I can cry silently in a movie theater and no one is the wiser. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I, I get a little, like, <laughs> it, <it's, laughs> I do that thing. It's really funny, though. Like, I was, uh, I was with my friend Kyle, um, like, a couple years ago, and we, we were on a road trip, and, um, and, uh, like, I realized I didn't have my license, like, halfway through the road trip. Huh. I've just been driving through state lines, like, with no license, which is super bad. You, you will get badly fined or arrested or something. Jeez. Um, especially because Kyle is black, which does not help when you are <laughs> rolling through the south with no license. And, um... Oh, yeah, the, <laughs> the south is... It's just a racist place. It, it, I, yeah, I don't want to generalize, but there is there is a contingent there for sure. Yeah, you would. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we were driving and we're like, what happens if we get pulled over? And I was like, 
I think I'll just cry. I'll just cry, Kyle, and then maybe the cop will feel so bad or embarrassed for me that he'll just let us go. And he just, like, looks at me, like, dead silent for a second, and without a trace of irony, he was like, Yo, I kill myself before I cried in front of another man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I was like, holy shit. Just the diction on that is really yeah, like... <laughs> it was the funniest fucking thing. In front of another man. Yeah. I was like, oh, uh, me too. I was totally kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, God. I, was... I, I did have a very embarrassing cry, and I think I may have shared it on the show. Really? It was, it was actually fairly recent. Um, I went to Japan, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to the... Um, the Toei Museum. Yep. And not the Toy Museum, but the Toei. Right. It's a, it's a uh, production company. It's sort of like, I don't know, Fox or CBS. Right. Um, and they, like, produce, like, Dragon Ball Z, and uh, they produce all of, like, the Sentai shows, like Power Rangers in Japan. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they had a live show that was, like, uh, it was primarily a Power Rangers show. Um, of the current Power Rangers at the time, and they were just doing like their Power Ranger thing, and it was all dubbed and shit, and it was fucking intense and epic, and like there was just fights, and like there was a plot and shit, and you could follow it, like even though it was in Japanese. Nice, nice. Because because it's very like, wow, wow, they're doing poses and like everything's very like, and they're very like character actor and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I was just like, yeah, this is awesome. Like I'm getting so into it. This is so cool. And then like. uh and then there was kind of this plot where they were like separated between two worlds uh -huh. and then they were like trying to get each other back so like through the whole story it was cutting between like these two rangers and these three rangers and then it was like oh man when are they gonna get back together like when are they gonna when are they gonna come together and and like fight the the villain yeah and then and then right when like everything was said and done and they fucking like they, they came out of like the evil portal world and then they they, they all stood up on the stage and they were all like and it was like, Psh! and they were like doing all their individual poses, and then they were like, like I don't know what they were saying, but it was just like, and there was just like sparks and like explosions, and they all did their poses, right? And it was all like lit from behind and shit, and I, I just like, I was like, ah, that's awesome. <laughs> Like, it just makes you so happy that you cry? Yeah, that, that that was actually the first time I'd ever had the experience that I was so happy I could cry. Wow. It, it like, it, it felt like everything I ever wanted as a child, like, right in front of me. That's so fucking cool. <laughs> That's so cool. Of course, I should have known. <laughs> You've never driven down Bruce B. Downs? I don't believe I've ever driven... No, that's not true. I did drive through Florida. Really? Yeah. Where did I, you go? I drove from uh, oh, Jersey to Miami with my buddy Kyle. Remember I told you that, like, this was on the same road trip. He's my big uh, black dude friend who's, like, super tough and, like, but we were scared because, like, uh, you know, uh, it just, it looks, it looks suspicious to Southerners, certain types of Southerners, mm -hmm. uh, when a white dude and a black dude are hanging out. Some, right. some people don't appreciate that down there. Yeah. And, uh, and the, um, and I was, like, the one, like, I was like, if we get pulled over, I'm just going to cry. And Kyle was like, yo, I kill myself before I cry in front of another man. Remember that story? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, that. so that's the same road trip. And uh, I believe uh, we had uh, a blunt with us. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and uh, So you were just being very frank with one another? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, we were having a stony drive, but we had to be very careful because we couldn't... A stony drive. Because we couldn't smoke in the car because, like, you don't want to get pulled over by a cop in the south and then, like, have your car smell like weed or anything like that. This is many, many years ago. This uh -huh. is, like, ten years ago. And um, we're driving by, like, it's a roadblock, and they're, like, checking cars and stuff. And, like, I have it in my hands, and I just put it away really fast. And then, like, the cop pulls us over, and he's like, Where's the marijuana cigarette? And I was like, Whoa. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. It was in my sock. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he didn't he didn't find it. Um, oh, nice. The, well, I, I don't believe... I always thought that if I thought I was going to get mugged or, like, walk through a bad neighborhood, I'd put my money in my sock. That's my a good idea. In my sock. It's a good idea. Or my shoe. Yeah, that's a very, it's a very like nerdy white guy thing to do. I feel. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> like the money's in my sock. Uh, you'll never find it. The money is in my uh, initialed monogrammed underwear that my mom sewed in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Oops. We got away with it because apparently, I don't know the exact legality of it. I should have, 
But uh, I don't believe they're allowed to search you unless they have, like, real probable cause. Um, I guess seeing it would have been probable cause, but he didn't He didn't frisk us for whatever reason. Yeah. And he was just like, do I have permission to search your vehicle? And we were like, I would really rather you didn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I guess, like, they just fucking didn't want to deal with it, so they just let us go. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was very nice of them, because God knows they could have fucked with us very badly. Oh, Taffy. All right. Some Laffy Taffy. <laughs> oh, you can't help but not laugh when you eat yeah. Laffy Taffy. <laughs> oh, I just did like a spin. Yeah, it was awesome. So in Japan. Yep. It says it says Shine Get, which is why the shine is like all the way over there. Oh, what does Shine Get mean? <laughs> it's just funny. It's, it's just like English. It's like, uh, Shine Get! <laughs> <laughs> I used to have an English shirt that said, Accidenta Offside. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I know. I know. But I wore it proudly. Accidenta offside? Yeah, it was like supposed to be a football reference, but it was a buffalo and a football. I was like, this doesn't make any more sense. <laughs> with visuals than yeah, without. Exactly. <laughs> Accidenta offside. <laughs> so they threw me in a prison because they thought it was me. Oh, shit. Because they, the, earlier, the fucking drug trip that Peach had, right. it, it looked like Mario. And because the villain... Is like a clone of Mario. They think you... So... Uh, what? So, okay, so you just landed in your plane, stood there and cleaned up the mess with your water, and they think you fucked up the whole island? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the Delfinos are not that bright. Yeah. They might be stupid. Yeah, they should probably go fuck themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cleaning up because I want to have a goddamn vacation and they're not doing anything. Yeah, right? They're like, welcome to our beautiful island and welcome to jail. <laughs> <laughs> like when you like land in Guantanamo and then somebody sneaks some like heroin in your bag. Uh, <laughs> why would you go to Guantanamo? I don't know, just to hang out. <laughs> yeah, just to say you've been there. I did. Uh, Bucket list. Oh, <laughs> I did go to Trinidad one time, and really? yeah, and they, um... Did you go to Tobago? I did. It's <laughs> fucking amazing, dude. Sweet. Tobago is, like, totally, like, wildly untamed jungle. There's, we're not missing any plot right now, are we? No. Oh, god, god, no. oh my god, alright. Mario's fucking... This is, like, some <laughs> serious Mario... <laughs> It's like, my life is flashing before my eyes. Like, oh, oh, sure hope I don't have to fucking take water and rub shit off. <laughs> I never thought it would come to this. <laughs> Thanks for letting me keep my weapon-like jetpack thing yeah. in jail. Mm -hmm. Thoughtful of them. Uh, but yeah, all I was going to say was uh, Trinidad and Tobago is one of those places where, like, you can get thrown in jail, and then the American embassy will be like, uh, we have, uh, on record, two Americans being there, and they'll just be like, what Americans? And then you're just in Trinidad jail for fucking an indefinite period of time. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's terrifying. Jesus. Other than that... Lovely place. <laughs> really enjoyed Lovely it. place from outside of a cell. I did enjoy it. It was it was awesome. Did you did you uh, experience their bauxite and beaches? Uh, I did. Uh, the 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 beaches were beautiful. The 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 sand, <laughs> the sand was white and the people were brown. So it was the exact opposite of New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! It's an o Oreo! <laughs> um, oh yeah. I saw a little gardening trowel and some golf clubs and balls and such. And those are big cans of hydrogen peroxide that they huff. <laughs> <laughs> they huff them to get high? Yeah. Dude, can you even huff hydrogen peroxide? I doubt it. I mean, I guess if you can huff anything if you put your heart and mind to it. <laughs> <laughs> if you put your, your lungs to it, I guess. My, uh... I need a fucking battery, Jesus. Wait, I don't know if I ever told this story, but when I was in uh, Trinidad, I... It was like 2002, I think, and those were like... I was a pot smoker for a long time, but those were like my championship smoking days. Really? Did you win tournaments? No, but uh, if there were tournaments, we could have won them. And so we went... <laughs> I don't know, I'd, I've seen a lot of heavy, heavy... Yeah, that's true, that's true. Pot smoking fiends. It's, I mean, it's, it's nothing that I'm proud of, but just for the sake of the tale. Uh, we, um, in Trinidad, like, the, the kid we stayed with, like, owned a ton of property, and there were just, like, fields of weed, like, as far as the eye could see. So he would just go out, like, for an hour and come back with, like, garbage bags full of it. And, um, and it wasn't the best weed, but it was, it was the real deal, and, like, so... Uh, there were four of us. It was it was like the Costco of weed. It, it, that's exactly what it felt like. Yes, 
uh, so there were four of us, and uh, we smoked, I believe it was four pounds of weed in three days. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd say that's tourney worthy. Yeah, I mean, it's... Dude, you would have been banned from it, tournaments, it, dude. It, it, it involves doing nothing but staying inside and going from one blunt to the next. And um, I remember looking at it, like the pile uh, of weed on the table, and being like, can we really fucking smoke pounds of weed in a, a day? And my friend Aaron, who was with me, just turned to me, and without a trace of irony, just like determination in her eyes, she was like, if we put our hearts and minds to it, we can accomplish anything. <laughs> like, this, is, this is really inspiring slash not inspiring. <laughs> if we really think hard and give it our all, this weed will be gone tomorrow. <laughs> so help me, God. And it was amazing, too, because like Trinidad is a country where you don't want to be caught smoking weed. Like... Oh, is, it, is it a criminal offense? Absolutely. And uh, the police there, the police there are not like police like you think, like we think of, like in their in their light blue button-down shirts. And if you're in trouble, they'll help you. Like <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the police in Trinidad, like they were dressed all in black, like military gear, and they had like the fucking like machine guns crossed in the, in the X formation on oh their backs. Oh my god! So they're like they're not protect and serve. They're Serve! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 I think, I mean, it just seems like they're extensions of the military. And uh, they're wow. just like to keep people in line. It, it was really crazy. Because that wasn't even like Trinidad proper. That was uh, Tobago, which is, oh shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, I don't know what the deal is but they're basically they're two different countries that are, like have the same government i think yeah they're always they have the same flag yeah yeah it's it's always trinidad and tobago and they um they uh definitely are fuck it's just crazy there like it's tobago is like untamed jungle and it's super beautiful but like like crazy dangerous at the same time um did you ever get into any danger the most dangerous thing I witnessed was a machete fight. Um, <laughs> were you a, an active member of no, this machete fight? No, we were on the... God, I hope my mom doesn't hear this. She'd be, <laughs> she'd be like retroactively scared of shit that happened 10 years ago. Um, we were on the back of a flatbed truck and, um, and just driving along. Oh shit. Oh, did, did he just check in to be like, fuck you, you suck. <laughs> That's his job, man. I guess so. He, he did destroy the cosmos and is asking me for my health <laughs> to rebuild it. So. Good point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, um, we were we were on the back of a flatbed truck just driving along, and we see this dude, like, just running with, like, a, a big clay pot. Oh, nice fence work. That That's is fun. awkward. Um... He's running with a clay pot in his hands, and we're like, that's really weird. And then we drive, like, further up the road, and there are these three guys just, like, that all have machetes just chasing after him. And they, they're, they like... It, the most, like, disturbing thing about it was, like, um, they, they weren't even, like, running super fast. They were just, like, at a trot. <laughs> it was just, like... They were like, we know that, like, the police are not going to stop us. Like, nothing's stopping us. We're going to catch this guy eventually so we can just conserve our energy. Wow. Yeah, and then, like, later we saw ambulances, like, go flying by us. <laughs> and we were like, time to stay at the resort, please. <laughs> Did, uh, was the guy who stole the clay pots, was he going, one jump ahead of the bread line, one jump ahead of the sword? He, he was not... <laughs> He was not in any way that jovial. Oh, okay. He was not in the mood for singing or dancing. Dun, 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 dun. And then they're all like, straight right! <laughs> <laughs> Scoundrel! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucked up. But we were pretty high, so it didn't really register. No, you we were just like, as, cool. Yeah, we were just like, oh, wow, that sucks. But like, <laughs> it, it's, it's weird too. Like, I think back... This is part of the reason I'm scared to have kids someday. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, I think of all the things that I've done, and I I feel like I was a pretty, like, um, I, I feel like I wasn't that crazy a kid, you know? Like, I did a lot of stuff, but nothing, like, too dangerous, generally. I feel like anybody could could think that, based on, like, what's going on in your head. Uh, yeah. Because if you, if you just kind of, like, step outside yourself and be like, 
I went to Tobago and smoked four bags of weed. Yeah. And then it's and then it's like, oh okay. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I got all of them. Nice, good job. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I'd just be afraid of like my child dying because he did like half of the stuff that I did. <laughs> like, how did I not die during any of these things? Uh, it's it's the humans is pretty resilient, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Because like that guy was being. That guy actively did something that he knew would get him hacked up by machetes. That is true. You were just being a kid. You were yeah. just a bystander. You were just driving by. Yeah. It was really pretty. The sunsets were nice. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying the guy getting hacked up was pretty. Oh, yeah. It's really beautiful. It was really nice. Have you ever seen someone be murdered? It's it's quite it's quite an experience. Oh, for Biglia. <laughs> you just take the- Oh, yeah. yeah! That's awesome! Fuck all, y'all. That did not hit Ew. the targets that I told it to. Weird that they like, they, they slink up into the ceiling after you. They don't. They don't have like a tension to them though. They just kind of wiggle all the way up yeah. instead of like wiggling and then wiggling faster as they get up. Yeah, I don't know if they're alive or. Okay, so. Right. They look like Play-Doh after you'd like. Did you have the Play-Doh um, set where you could like push down the presser? And it would make Plato spaghetti. Oh yeah. Oh, it was the best. That was the fucking classic. That yeah. was the quintessential <laughs> Plato accessory. <laughs> if you wanted the true Plato experience, everyone who is anyone in the Plato circles knows. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty convinced that that was the entire reason that Plato was constantly ingested. <laughs> <laughs> I ate some Plato in my day. Oh yeah, we it's, all have. Yeah, it's very salty. Because it's not. That terrible. It's like terrible. it's really. You know what I? You know what? Oh, this is embarrassing to say. When I was a little kid, you know, I, I used to like straight up eat. What? Uh, chapstick. Really? Yeah. I'm allergic to chapstick. Oh well, then you would have died if you had been me. I, I think so. Because yeah. I fucking downed that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not like. And I knew it, I wasn't supposed to be doing it, so I would like hide behind the couch and be like. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I wouldn't take huge bites or anything, but I would just, like, nibble on it. I don't know. I'm, I shouldn't have told this. That's, that's gross. <laughs> yeah. I Whoa! Think, I think very much less of you now. Well, they were cherry-flavored, and think, they go on your mouth. I think all of our girlfriends think you're, you're you're just really gross now. All, oh, all of our girl fans? All of our girl fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of our girl lovelies. Yeah. Oh, and they are lovely. <laughs> hey, ladies. Uh, you ever wanted to be with a guy who uh, used to eat chapstick? <laughs> I'll see you after the show. <laughs> I'll see you after the show. Bring some chapstick. <laughs> if you don't have any chapstick, Play-Doh will suffice. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Bring bring anything around your house. I'll I'll probably eat it. <laughs> I have pica. Do you <laughs> I have a serious problem. <laughs> Is that what that's called? Yeah, pica when you eat anything. Really? Yeah. Well, like a lot of pica cases are about specific things. Whoa! So, like, like, uh, like eating hair is really common. Interesting. Yeah, I've seen I've seen stuff where people eat like rocks, I, or like couch cushions. That's so interesting. Yeah. I I know a girl um, who used to just like pull out her hair, just like mm, this has to go. Oh yeah, that's like a that's like a sadomasochistic. Yeah, tendency. like some kind of nervous thing. She talked to me about it once. It's it's really. It's it's similar to the to the daredevil thing we were talking about before. Like, oh yeah, you, you don't feel okay unless you're doing that one specific thing. Well, I mean, that you could liken that to any mental disease, really. I guess like so. Like OCD. Oh, dude. You're not okay unless you like tap the door four times. Did I ever tell you that I had really really horrible OCD when I was younger? Really? Yeah. Wow. I'm, yeah. There's not enough time in this game, Grumps, to uh, talk about it. It's kind of a serious subject, I guess. But I can talk about it on the next one. Have yeah, fun. Yeah. I guess that'll give people reason to keep watching. Yeah, tune in and hear about my very, very sad <laughs> 18 to 19th year of life. Yeah, because this this constantly changing adventure of filled with wonder and visual pleasure yeah. is definitely not going to bring people to the next episode <laughs> on its own. It's uh, next time on Game Grumps. Tales. <laughs> oh, whoa. Welcome back to Psychology Grunts. Yeah! I'm your host, Dr. Arid. Yeah. Today I have my patient with me, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Well, that's fine. No, that's good. That's just our... Uh, um. All right, so, yeah. 
we get a lot of letters uh, from people who talk about the fact that they deal with depression and Game Grumps uh, helps them, and that is fucking awesome. Um, so, like... I mean, it's not awesome that you have depression. No, no. It's awesome that we can help. <laughs> yes, yes. And, like, um, so I guess I'll share my story, which I've never really told before in, in a any kind of, like, public forum. Um, when I was 18, uh, I got really sick um, with mono, and I was just laid up uh, for, like, eight months. I couldn't, like, really get out of bed and shit, and it was really, really awful. And I just... It was the first, I had like a really happy childhood, um, and uh, I like, it was my first experience of like real like sadness, mm. like over a long period of time, and I guess it was, I guess it was depression. But then I noticed like, even when I got physically healthier, I was still like really struggling like mentally with a lot of stuff, because I had gone away to college and like, suddenly like, I don't know. I, I think that's a tough age just because like, you know who you are when you're a kid, um, but you, you're not a kid anymore, yeah. and you don't know how to be an adult yet, you don't know where you fit into the world. Yeah, and then you have these constant anxiety attacks about how, like, your kid life is over. Yeah, and what all does this, that mean? All the stuff that you, you love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But keep in mind, let me just say that, like, it gets way fucking better, because, like, the more of an adult you become, you're like, oh... I can actually like really get into this and it's super fun and yeah. not that different from being a kid um, if you happen to do stuff you love and laugh a lot and all that mm -hmm. so um, so yeah I started noticing that like I was just like really sad all the time and really like having a lot of trouble um, just getting out of bed in the morning and like things were things were bothering me and basically the short version of the story is I had obsessive compulsive disorder and it was undiagnosed and I didn't really know what it was um, like always or just then see that's the weird thing because OCD is n not it's hard to separate from like your normal life it's more just like a an exaggerated form of what everybody has like um, how can I describe it like if uh, something shitty happened to you and it bothered you. Like, it, it would bother anybody. But, like, a quote-unquote normal person would get over it in, like, 20 minutes or whatever. Right. But some, like, for you, it would bother you for weeks or whatever. Like. Oh, okay. So that, that's the best way I can describe. Um, it, it's just an exacerbated form of, like, your natural personality. So m OCD kind of, like, feeds on your imagination. So it's different for everybody. Um, but for me... Like, uh, it was that everything in my mind would not stop connecting. Um, like, I had too many associations constantly happening in my mind. And as a result, like, I couldn't do anything. So, like, okay, here's an example. Let's say I wanted to go uh, bike riding right mm -hmm. now. My, like, when I was struggling with it, uh, my mind would be racing constantly. And it would be like, I'd have an image of my head ride, riding a bike. And then I'd think of me riding a bike when I was a kid back home. Then I'd start thinking of home. And then I'd start thinking, well, my girlfriend's in my... My, my ex-girlfriend is in my hometown. I don't like my ex-girlfriend. Therefore, I can't go bike riding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh. Like, my mind would associate everything until it would get to something that made me sad. And then I couldn't disconnect the sad thing from what I wanted to do. And as a result, I just couldn't do anything. So like, Interesting. It, it sucked, I, I dude. I kind of have that, I, I guess. A lot of people do. I never really thought do. about that. It's awful. So like, I um, mm. there was a period I almost failed out of school because of it, because I couldn't go to my classes. Like, I didn't really leave like my apartment for maybe like five months, something like that. And I'll 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 never forget, dude. Like it, it was it was the weirdest thing. Like, um, I was at my friend uh, Adam's house. And uh, I was sitting on the computer, and I, I said something, and he was like, dude, just stop obsessing about that shit. And it was just one of those weird, like, unconscious, like, things. And I just randomly typed in obsession into, like, Google search terms or whatever. And all these pages on obsessive compulsive disorder came up. And, like, I started reading about it, and I just, like, fucking immediately started crying. Because, like, 
just, I was like, oh my god, I'm not fucking crazy. Like, I just have this thing. And then I went to the school, uh... That's, that's an interesting, like, response to that, too. Is that, like, a lot of people would hear that and be like, I am crazy because I have this? Oh, no, 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 no. It, like, for, for me, the moment I found out what it was, as soon as it had a name, I had a focal point from which to attack it from. And yeah. then I was like, if, if it's a disease, quote unquote, then it has a cure, you mm -hmm. know? But when it was just like this nameless thing, like hanging over my life, it was just really, really tough. That's why I tell people like, don't be scared to like go to therapy and like, don't think of it as like a sign of weakness to like ask for help if you're feeling sad. Cause yeah. like there's people out there who are like, who want to help you and are qualified to help you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Is they're qualified to help. Yeah. You. They they know what they're doing when it comes to like your fucking head. Yeah, yeah, and like I, your friend is gonna listen to you, but he's not necessarily gonna give you like a advice or b good advice. <laughs> yeah, no question. And so like they put me on, I think it was Prozac, uh, for like I was supposed to be on it for an indefinite period of time. And one of the one of the misconceptions about those types of drugs is that they're happy pills they're definitely not they they like <laughs> they you don't they they don't make you happy they just they even things out like in your mind so you can think clearly and solve your own problems you know like you have to take the initiative and be like no i'm not going to fucking live like this right right um it's this it's the same thing with like my add medicine yeah exactly like i don't i don't i don't need it to function but it really does like i i always feel like I can take it for a little bit, and then I get into these good habits, and then when I'm off it, then I can I can carry that through. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's 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 amazing because I, I think back to those those times, which now seem so distant. You know, they were like over a decade ago. Yeah. Um, and like, I'm just so happy now, like all the fucking time, because like I know what it's like to be sad. You know, and like, it gives you. Like, you have, there's the two different kinds of happiness, you know? There's the kid happiness, where you're just like, I'm happy because everything's awesome and, yeah. and new and interesting. I'm having a great time. Yeah. And, and then there's the other happy, like, the light at the end of the tunnel happiness, where you're like, I had to go through some shit, and, like, I earned this, you know? Yeah, the mellow happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the at peace kind of feeling. The, like, half-opened eyes relaxed on the couch. <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. So, so that's, um, that's the very, uh, truncated version of my story, but, like, basically after, oh, yeah, so, like, that's when I went to France, like, as an exchange student, um, and that really helped me, too, like, going to, like, a totally new place and, like, seeing, like, different environments and just being like, hey, you know what, like, the world isn't what I thought it was, there's, yeah. like, a lot more to it that I haven't seen. Oh, that looks friendly. <laughs> and so like and I had this big like maybe this is like dramatic overly dramatic to say but it is what happened like there was like this really pretty lake uh, in the middle of the town I was staying in and um, I was on Prozac for I guess like six months and then like while I was out there I was like I don't fucking need this shit anymore like this shit is I, I just feel good and I don't I'm done and uh so I like took did you, the, did you throw it? I did. Nice. I took the pill bottle and fucking threw it into the lake. Yes. Yeah, it was uh, it was like one of the one of the most satisfying like personal moments, I guess. That's super cool. And I've never told anybody that before. I, I would love to have a story like that. My life is so not that. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everybody has everybody has their things, man. Their catharsis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, In one way or another. Yeah. I don't I don't think we wasted enough time on it, first of all. You were mad. <laughs> that was as mad as I've ever seen you at me. <laughs> that, that you didn't know Alkazam. The, the last time I saw that kind of anger, it's funny. This goes way back. Uh -huh. uh, I was in college, and I um, there, there was like this open, um, there was this poetry reading. Yeah. And you could read whatever you wanted, and it was done in a church. And um, <laughs> oh god. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> was it like <laughs> was it like? Jingle bells, Batman spells, Robin legs. No, you, you could you could do whatever you wanted. It was totally freeform. So, I was in my early stages of what eventually became Ninja Sex Party, uh -huh. and uh, 
so I just had this like poem about sex, which was funny because I'd never had it at the time. Nice. Yeah. And I remember it the feels good. I remember the first lines like it was I'd sure like to have sex, you see. It's sweaty and it's dirty and it works for me. Missionary <laughs> doggy style 69, blow jobs, hand jobs, feeling fine. <laughs> and and right after just committed it to memory. It's just like it's weird, it's just in there. And like um as soon as I finished that second line, the girl who was running the poetry reading was, "Okay," and she just like got up and like so, like told me to leave, and um, and people booed, and people booed the censorship. Wow! Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was, nice. Really, it was really cool. And then um, I finished it out in the parking lot. What's the rest? I don't remember. Come on, man. I don't remember. It was a long poem. Like I went through the whole experience of having Works sex, but like me. as I as I read it later, like it was clearly from like the point of view of someone who had never done it before, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot I didn't so understand. You were at the so time. fucking committed to this poem yeah. that you had to gather a crowd outside of the church. Well, no, I was hanging outside of the church afterwards, like because like I just went to the back of the room. I didn't leave. I just stayed for the end, and then. Um, I was out in the parking lot and someone like saw it was me and they were like, dude, tell me the, tell us the rest. So like I got up on the stairs, like the stairs that <laughs> led to the church <clears throat> and gave my own douchey fucking sex poetry sermon. Did you have like a bongo guy? <laughs> Whoa, man. Whoa, man. Whoa. Whoa, man. <laughs> If she misses X, I had to run for my life. <laughs> oh wait, no, it's a uh, Jane. Get me off this crazy thing. Called love. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, you're good, dude. You're good at that. I love that. I lo I love beat poetry. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I can put get thrown out of a church on my. Uh, Cross that shit off my bucket list. Was it ever on your bucket list? No, but I mean, I might as well put it up there since I can cross it off and it looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool. It looks good. It looks good on a on a bucket list resume. Magnitude four. Oh, oh this yeah. is like oh. That no. fucking blueberry with a radish head doesn't stick. Now I'm afraid to start it. No, oh, go ahead. Okay, my dad saw a lot of like fucked up shit in the war, so like. Um, as soon as, as soon as it was, it was over, he was like, I don't want to be in Israel anymore. I'm super bummed out and depressed. Yeah. So he had like, it's like that classic, like immigrant story. He had like a hundred dollars in his pocket and he, uh, flew to America or he took a boat. I can't remember. Um, and he was going to take a Greyhound bus across the country to LA, um, where he like had some friends or family or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he was only in New York for a day, and he was, like, trying to ride the subway around, but he, like, couldn't figure out the subway, because the New York subway is fucking confusing as shit if mm -hmm. you've never done it before. So he didn't know where the A train was. Uh, he was on the... He was at Columbus Circle on the 60th Street subway station, and uh, he saw a cute girl, and he went up to her, and he asked her in, like, broken English. She was like, hey, do you know the way to uh, the A train? And she was like, um, well, yeah, that's actually the train I'm taking, so I'll show you where it is. And that was my mom. Oh. Yeah. And, like, he just, like, super fell in love with her crazy hard, like, um, instantly. And, like, at the end of the subway ride, like, when he got to his stop, like, my dad, my dad is, like, super confident, but not at all smooth. <laughs> so, like... He just like put his he just knew he couldn't let her get away so he put his arm around her arm and he was like we're going to lunch. <laughs> and my mom like laughed at him and she was like uh no we're not. <laughs> but she was like uh I just came from lunch but here's my number. And she was like I'd never given my number to anybody before but I just got a cool vibe from him. And uh and they started dating and 3 years later boom jams marriage me. Oh damn. Ain't that some crazy shit? Marriage me. Marriage slash me. <laughs> I believe in that order. Wow. Heaven. Oh, it's that. All right. Do you want... While we're sailing, do you want me to tell you more stories of my family? Uh, why wouldn't I? Cool. I can tell you how my grandparents met. How's that? Uh, so my grandma, 
who you can actually see for a second in the Ninja Sex Party if we were gay video. Really? <laughs> yeah, she's in there for a second. She, my grandma's awesome. Oh, that's right, when it zooms out yep. when you're the baby. Yeah, and it yeah. actually points to her as like Danny's grandma. Um, she's cool as shit. She's one of my best friends, actually. And uh, her husband, uh, my granddad, he was the fucking man. He was so cool. Um, he was actually super instrumental in uh, inventing the electrocardiogram. What's a cardiogram? That is the thing that registers electrodes attached to your body in the hospital and it registers your heart. It's like beep, beep, oh. beep. Yeah, yeah. He was he was one of the dudes that invented that shit. Wow, oh, man. So he's he is a major proponent in the iconic sound of somebody dying in a movie? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. It's insane. And like actually when he was really sick, like he was uh, hooked up to that and I was like, Do you realize how crazy this is, Pop? Like this is what you created. He's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> he, was, he was super chill and humble. Wow. Um, but he was... So when he uh, invented that, he went on, like, the Johnny Carson show and, like, a bunch of other... Uh, Johnny Carson, for those who don't know, was, like, the David Letterman and Jay Leno of, like, the 50s and the 60s and all the way up to the 80s and, I think, early 90s. Johnny Carson. Yeah. Oh, really good show. Yeah. Oh, nope, that's Ed Sullivan. Never mind. Point is... Uh, he was making this tour uh, of like colleges um, so he could like discuss with other scientists and give seminars on how to work the cardiogram. And my grandma was also a scientist. She was younger though, she was like 20. And um, she, uh, she worked with rats and stuff. And, um, and he was in her lab like just chatting with another guy, like another scientist. And that was the 40s when like smoking was totally encouraged at all times totally oh, cool yeah. to smoke anywhere so he's smoking a cigarette and hanging out and my grandma comes up to him and she's like you better not leave one ash on this table in this laboratory and like and she walks away and my granddad like looked at the guy next to him and was like man whoever gets this one is in trouble <laughs> like like she is a ball buster and then uh, I guess they talked more, and two weeks later they were engaged. Wow. Yeah, he was like 28, I think, and she was 20, and um, and they were married for like 63 years. Wow. Isn't that insane? Jeez, 63. 63 years beats my record by 61 and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking insane. Um, did I ever tell you I got invited to an orgy one time? <laughs> Did I not tell you this? <laughs> I don't. I, is this a Game Grumps appropriate story? I, I guess. I guess it is. I didn't do it. All right. So, the story is I had um, I had two friends and they were a lesbian couple. Uh, let's let's call them Michelle and Janine to protect the innocent. Okay. And um, they were actually called Blushell and Blushell and Menine. Yeah. <laughs> you've found. You've cracked the code. <laughs> Um, but they were, uh, they were my good friends and they were just beautiful. Um, and, uh, they were a couple. And of course, when you're a guy and you have a couple of, like, lesbian girlfriends, even though you know they're not into dudes at all, you're always secretly hoping, like, maybe I will be the guy who will be invited into the threesome. <laughs> like, the threesome that they're not having, you know? <laughs> and never will. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but so, oh man, what a beautiful cloudy background to tell this orgy story to. Yep. One day I was just hanging out at their place and the three of us are on the couch together and uh, we're just playing video games or whatever and uh, Ah shit! Yay! There it goes. There you go. And Janine uh, puts her hand on my leg out of nowhere and she's like Dan, uh, we have a proposition for you. And I was like <laughs> Go on! <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Damn it! Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Damn it. Um, so what? The, your head, inside your head, there's like fireworks and shit going yeah, up. Yeah, like yeah. Outside, I was like, oh, do tell. But on the inside, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, what it turned out to be was they were swingers and they were part of this like underground orgy club of like these people in New York they would get together and so I got invited into a 25 person orgy where the breakdown was six dudes and 19 girls whoa yeah yeah so I don't 
I'm going to do some quick math. That's something like 3.2 girls for every dude. <laughs> and that's like, that's a lot of pressure. That's a <laughs> yeah. lot of pressure. You gotta, you gotta really fucking, you gotta cross train for shit like that. <laughs> so I didn't end up doing it uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because like, uh, because of, because of that. And also because I couldn't help, I don't want gone to hurt Pacifilis, you oh, know? Yeah. And like, I can't assume that fucking everyone else at that orgy is having their first orgy, you know? Like, it's gotta, it's gotta be, it, like, if you, if you, like, combined everyone's sexual history together, there have to be, like, 1,000 boning cases in that one room, <laughs> which is gross. But the funny part was that, that I wanted to bring up was they made me, like, fill out, like, uh, a form card like that like a power you had to write a paragraph like you had to submit a headshot so you were attractive enough to do it and then like <laughs> Jesus. Uh, i know it was really official high standards i know and then um you had to fill out like a like a little card saying why you wanted to be in the orgy like <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, this is really hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh gosh. Yeah, that is outstanding. So, yeah, no, I never, I mean, I've, I've definitely, the, the thing that's funny, did you ever, like, stick your finger at them and then they bite it and then they just don't let go? And then you no. just carry them around? Oh, it's, because they don't really have sharp teeth. No, but they have, a like, a strong jaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, you could, like, grab them and then, like, put them on your ear and just, like, let them there for a while. And oh, just kind of, like, meow. <laughs> Oh, you Florida kids. Yeah, that's what we did for fun. What did you do for fun? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, well, I guess I'll see you later, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, like, we used to, um... God, what did we do for fun? Shuck corn? No, well, what we used to do... <laughs> there, I grew up ne near this town called Milburn, and Milburn had like a river, uh, and uh, so we would kind of like hop on these stones on the river and follow it down, and then the river led to a mountain, and like we'd travel up into like this mountain range, mm -hmm. and we found this fucking really cool rock like up at the top of the mountain, and it was like a giant, it looked like a big stone table that was kind of round, mm -hmm. so we went up there and we would pretend that we called ourselves the Knights of the Not-So-Round Table. And we- <laughs> Shut up. And, and <laughs> we, uh, and we'd like, we'd basically have, like, LARPing sessions before LARPing was a thing. And we would just pretend we were, like, Dungeons and Dragons characters. And I was a mage. And, like, we would go on adventures and shit. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever set fire to a- a factory or a mill? No. <laughs> did you ever, did you ever kill a man? <laughs> well, no, because you lived in a place called Millburn. <laughs> Come oh, on. Okay. All right, that's high five worthy. Come I on. think it has a lot to do with. Um... Can I have that ice pouch. Oh yeah. Oh fuck yeah! yeah so nice. Oh, right on the crotch. Uh, oh, it'll come back. Okay. So like it's right there ish. Oh yeah, it's making a K turn. Yeah. On the island? <laughs> so it's just gonna make a little U-turn real quick. It's one of those sandboats. Sandboats? Yeah. You know, you, dude, you've never fucking driven on a land boat? What? Are you being yeah. serious? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Actually, they have. Um, I was like, that sounds like magic. Yeah, they, they do have uh, the duck boat tours in Boston. Like, they are. Uh, they start off as like. Like cars, basically, and then they go hey. in the water, and the wheels go in, and it becomes a boat. Oh wow! Yeah, it's super neat. That's awesome. Yeah. I've been on an airboat. Ooh. Which is like, kind of like a land boat, I guess. I guess so. I. Ooh, excuse me. Like in the in the Everglades. Oh god, yeah, those are crazy. The Everglades? Yeah. It was, a, <laughs> it was super scary. I guess I've never like referred to it as an actual plural. Like, dude, the Everglades, those are nuts. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, the Everglades is just a place. Yeah, it's a so place. It's like, have you been to the Everglades? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a place at the very edge of Florida, the bottom tip. And uh, it's just all swampy land and tons upon tons of fucking alligators everywhere. It's, 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 it's like a super alligator party. Yeah. And, and everything in the Everglades wants to kill you, including the Everglades itself. Yeah, yeah. So. It, yeah. <laughs> 
I don't think anybody's like traversed the full entirety of the Everglades on their own. Because it's so volatile. It's so dangerous. Yeah, like, I told you that I wrestled an alligator while I was there, right? I'm sorry, what? Did I never fucking tell you about this? No. I had to have. I must have. Uh, apologies if we've told this story before. I know. Yeah, I wrestled an alligator. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a picture. I can show you. Uh, it wasn't what? the world's biggest alligator. It was, was, like, it, was it a baby alligator? It was, I think it was a youth. It was like six feet long. Um, That's still pretty... It was big. It was big enough to be disconcerting. Um, I It was many, many years ago. And, uh, like, w you go on the tour, um, on. like, the, you go on the airboat boat tour, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so you have these tours that, like, this, uh, Cajun dude, it, or, like, a swamp person will take you on... <laughs> Like, <laughs> yeah, just, like a guy you can't understand. Come on, my like, like, yeah, like they're cool as shit, but you can't understand a word they're saying. Um, and uh, before you go on the tour, they have like these alligator pens for like alligators that are like sort of like domesticated or whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> domesticated by name only. Yeah, exactly. A domesticated, cold, fucking heartless reptile. <laughs> <laughs> capable of murdering you. Um, so yeah, like, the, uh, oh, maybe you have to hit the pin, like, as you come out of it, so it, like, knocks you, like, right down. Um, real tired Mario shit. <laughs> so yeah, at this pen, like, they have, like, 20 people gathered around, like, looking at all the alligators, and the guy comes out, he's like, who wants to wrestle this alligator? And, uh, my, my friend Brett, <laughs> oh my god, my friend Brett, uh, was, uh, <laughs> he was like, hey, uh, my buddy Dan does. And I was r really stoned at the time. <laughs> and I was too stoned to like be like, no, no, I don't want that. That's not a thing that I want. <laughs> uh, I, you were like, dude. Yeah, it just like, well, just everyone like turned to me and like everyone's face, they were all so excited. They were like, yeah, do it. And I was like, I guess I'll, I guess I'll do it. And so I wrestled an alligator. Um, it was, yes, Aaron, thanks, yes. Thanks. Um, thanks for the enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Uh, and uh, yeah, like it's, um, once you get the jaws closed, it's super easy. Oh, this is a, as good a time as any also. Uh, I couldn't find the best picture of me wrestling that alligator um, from before uh, that people requested to see. But I did find one of me, uh, of 20-year-old me wrestling an alligator. So Barry, put that up. Wait, you have more pictures of you wrestling an alligator? There's a much better one where you can see the size of the alligator because it's from the side. This you can just kind of see the mouth and the tail. But it, it doesn't look as big as it actually was. And this is where people are just like, sure, sure. <laughs> Naked. Yeah, just hanging out with bros. Yeah, just, just sucking each other off like bros do. We were talking about Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> It's fucking cool. That is awesome. That's a better experience than I had. Um, the, uh, I, I was at, well, same uncle, actually. Uh, I was out, uh, on a road trip with him through the desert, um, in, uh, in Death Valley and, like, all parts of California and Nevada. It was when I was, like, I, I had taken some time off college because I was, going through some stuff and I was like it'd be better if I wasn't here right now trying to learn yeah and um so like we took a road trip together and it was it was awesome but like you're out there and you're like just hundreds of miles from any kind of civilization you know so like anyone you run into out there like they can do terrible things to you and never be caught you know mm -hmm. so like um, and you'll never be found and all that sort of thing. So we're out there. It's my uncle myself and his two dogs um, and We stop at these like natural hot springs and then like while we're there It's like nighttime and we're just hanging out and this dude just comes out of nowhere like there's no There's no cars anywhere like I have no idea where he came from and like I didn't get a bad vibe because like I'm like you know me, like, I'm unusually trusting of strangers, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, hey, a new friend!
friend. Hello, desert friend. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you brandish a knife before me? Yeah, but like, my uncle, I guess, had an immediate bad vibe about uh, from him, and uh, the guy was like, "Hey, your dog's friendly." And my uncle, like, without a trace of like humor, was like, "No." Meanwhile, like, they're the friendliest dogs in the world. <laughs> um, and the guy was like, "Oh, okay." And then he left. He just disappeared, like, over a hill and was gone again. And uh, I was like, that was weird, but we didn't talk about it again. Uh, like, ten years later, my uncle told me, because we slept in, like, the pickup truck, you know, we just, like, put blankets and pillows down. Uh -huh. And my uncle was like, yeah, just so you know, uh, I slept with a handgun under the pillow that night. <laughs> I was like, oh, my fucking God. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had a... Uh, I had a retroactively stressful hot tub experience, I mean, hot spring experience. <coughs> but him, dude. Yeah, that was a wild trip, man, like, cause I had, I had blue hair at the time. Where was it? And that, that you was- Blue hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? When I was- You always told me you wanted to dye your hair blue, but- Oh, I know, I wanted to dye my hair blue again. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It was, I had, I had, I can't remember if I had blue dreadlocks, but I definitely had blue hair and dreadlocks in the same year. Um, not my best year, frankly, <laughs> in terms of looking hot. I know Pokemon like the back of my hand. So what, what the hell is that on the back of my hand? <laughs> That's a joke from Fresh Prince. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? What? Because I'm sure people have gotten annoyed at this point. I'm just going to real quick tell that story from the road trip. Oh, okay. Because they keep forgetting. And for us, it's been like 20 minutes, but for everyone else, it's been like four days. Um, you know, so my uncle and I were driving through the desert, and one of the many weird adventures we had, we, we had some kind of like car problem, and we pulled over. I'm talking the middle of nowhere, and like, there's just this dude and his shack, and like, he has like some car parts outside, so he pro so we're like, he probably can fix things. And, uh, and we go into Oops. his shop, and there's like just, God damn it, Aaron! Oops, dude. Okay, so this this old dude, like, um, like real salt of the earth kind of guy. His name was Jusky, and like Whoa, that is a name. It is cool. And uh, my uncle, of course, like plays the part. Like, he's I mean, he's from New Jersey, like the rest of my family, but like. If he drives into the desert, he's wearing cowboy boots and a cowboy hat and a leather jacket and all that. Um, so Jusky has no problem with him, but I have like possibly dreadlocks, definitely blue hair, and like I just I I look like nothing he's ever seen before. And he keeps like giving me like the awkward eye, as Eminem used to say, mm -hmm. and uh, it just keeps looking over, and uh, I'm like, "Hi, Jusky," <laughs> you know, like like super nice, and he's like. Eh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure, like, he's about to call, like, the, uh, I don't know, the local chapter of the clan <laughs> <laughs> on me or something. And, uh, my uncle, like, my uncle who can read these situations really well, just immediately is like, oh, yeah, you're probably looking at my, uh, my nephew's hair, but he's a good boy, loves his Jesus, goes to church every, every Sunday. And, uh, Jeske's like, oh, oh, all right. And like from that moment on, he was totally cool with me. And meanwhile, inside, I'm like, "What's church, <laughs> Daddy?" Yeah, it was really funny. But I've it, it was one of those very interesting moments in my life where like, uh, well, damn. Um, I just wanted to put him to sleep. Yeah, there's very few times because I mean, like, you know, if you're Jewish, like you experience anti-Semitism and stuff. But like, it's not. It's not as difficult. Well, I shouldn't say it's not as difficult, but like, it's not immediately recognizable. Like racism, if you know, if you're an African American person and you walk into a room, everyone knows, you know, that you're African American. Mm -hmm. But like, Judaism, like in a lot of cases, you know, like they don't know until you tell them. In which case, they're like, you just like a lying, sneaky Jew. Not to. T <laughs> I'm, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So like. So I'd never experienced like, like straight hatred from someone I'd never said a word to before, you know? 
Like that that was a real interesting experience. And then to just watch it watch it like completely drain away um as soon as he as as soon as uh he found out that I was down with the J man. <laughs> this is my friend. <laughs> Fucked buggy. Yeah. I still remember the first fucking like uh oh, fuck. <laughs> I remember the first four words of my bar mitzvah thing oh, yeah. that I had to like sing. Oh God! What is? It? What were they? Uh, it's not gonna sound good with this song, but it's like. That's all I remember. Really? And but I mean like, my my Torah passage, like they, you know what the Torah is, right? Yeah, that's like the Jewish Bible. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Um, I need to put on a rappel right the fuck now. Yeah, all these Jews around. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tell all these Jewy stories. I gotta fucking yeah, man. Like the Torah. Oh, my mouth guard. It's in these. It's it's these sacred scrolls, basically. It's the Torah written on scrolls, yeah. and like they're very protected, and like they put coverings over them, and they'll have like. A, a silver like crown on certain ones of them and they're all different crowns Jesus. and That's they're cool. and they're behind a curtain too so when I would go to temple as a little kid the curtain would be closed all the time damn they are raring to go I just put a fucking max repel <laughs> and they'd, they'd pull the curtain back and you'd see them and it was like the I remember like the first time and I'm not a religious person but like I remember like seeing them in a, as a kid and being like wow like like reverence, you know, like uh -huh. they just look like really important. Um, Wait, so they're like somewhere. Oh, every every temple has a Torah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's 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 essentially the Hebrew Bible, but like written by hand by rabbis, like and blessed, you know, like it's super sacred. And in medieval times, it would take like. It, your, your life was like transcribing that shit. Damn. Um, yeah, so it was intense. Bad. That's some fucking like fantasy shit. It's very interesting, man. Like it's it's an old old religion. Um, it's I think it I think it's the first monotheistic religion. Maybe not. It's one of the first, certainly. Um, any anywho. Uh, oh, yeah. I see. I yeah. see your game. Yeah. So what a bar mitzvah is, is uh, that's the rite of passage when you're 13, and you have to memorize basically, and read and sing in a certain way, a passage from the Torah, and it's just like, I don't know what the selection process is. Oh, Persian. Hmm. Anyway, I'll just finish that super fast. Like the the part of the Torah that I had to read was like the second longest that you can be assigned. <laughs> So I like I just had to study it with my mom for like months and months and months and I had to do it in Israel too. Oh god. Yeah, in front of like all these like super elderly Jewish guys that like were like old school Israeli and they like you could hear like the murmurs when like they found out like that a kid from America who didn't speak Hebrew was going to be doing it and like it it was really cool cuz I I did it. I did it well and um my my granddad on my Israeli side, who I never really knew that well, like that was the one time he, I he was really really proud of me. Aww. Yeah, and he was like he was very moved. You could see, cause he he was like a Holocaust survivor. So to like see his grandson from another part of the world like maintain the traditions that he almost died for, you know, like it was a big deal for him. Damn dude. I know. Th this this got heavier than I meant it to, but like. Um, uh, well, I don't even know where I was going with it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was just that like, after it was over, I like almost fainted, like walking out of the temple, cause I was like, I didn't realize it, but I was so nervous and like, I guess I was too nervous to eat and everything. And as soon as it was over, like my body just like shut down. Jesus. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a crazy experience. Just a wall of weeds, bro. This was always a pleasing sound to me. Oh, the little popper on like a little like... Like on a Snapple can or something like that. If this is popped, then it's not good. Yeah, I love it. It also reminds me of like... That w Do you ever go back in your childhood and think of like ASMR shit before they had a name for it? Like just stuff that sounded good to your ears and it kind of gave you chills a little bit? Yeah, but like Bob Ross. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, that's not a fucking wall. Wow, I'll be damned. Okay. Come on. Yeah, Bob Ross is a perfect example. Such an idiot. Um, but another one was when Dorothy in Wizard of Oz. Whoops. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you found a way. Um, when Dorothy is uh giving the Tin Man oil, mm -hmm. and she's just like. And um, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something so peaceful about it. 63,000 souls. Yeah, bro. Oh, shit. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, fuck, please. I'm gonna yeah, level the fuck up. I'm gonna go back to my, my bros over here, my bro theft. Pr hang, hang out with my girl back home. Pretty. She's making me macaroni and cheese, bro. I'm gonna go back. She's gonna make me a sandwich, and I'm gonna be like, mm, that's a great lunch, girl. <laughs> And then we're going to have like a day fuck, and then I'm going to leave. Oh, a day fuck. Yeah. Those are nice. Yeah, where you're just kind of like, oh, I didn't expect this. All right. Yeah, well, this is happening. <laughs> and then you're just kind of like, yay. It's for the rest four of the in the day. afternoon, and my penis is inside somebody. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're just having like a dialogue with yourself <laughs> out loud. Yeah, she's like, could you stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> huh, this is great. Are you kidding me with this? <laughs> Neato. I remember the first time I ever like played hooky from school. Um, you got laid? No, oh. I what I, oh, I I didn't get laid until after college. Oh, I was right. I was twenty three, but I do I I did get that sweet blowy. Oh, um, and I just remember like, sweet I remember getting a blowjob in like junior year of high school or whatever, and like, uh, because my girlfriend at the time was sick, and uh, I was like, I'll I'll play hooky and. And skip school and go bring her like soup or something. She was like, "Ah, oh, soup!" <laughs> and I, so I was, uh, I was receiving fellatio from her, and looking at the clock and seeing that it was like 1:30 in the afternoon and thinking like, "Wow, my friends are in class right now. <laughs> this is the best." <laughs> oh, I was very checked out towards the end of high school. For true, by far. Um, thanks, lovelies. And the thing is, like, seriously, I feel like every so often, I, I feel like every so often I need something, and I will, I will voluntarily make it happen in my life where, just to bring it down a peg a little bit, like reality check, mm -hmm. because what we do is so cool. Yeah. And there are like stresses that come with it that are unique to this and like those stresses can be very difficult. Yeah. Like, and I, in, in the long run it's not it's it's like way better than some other shit that we could be doing. Oh god yeah and like and there, and there are days like th there's no way you can do anything daily for four years you know and like even though we don't record daily like this is a seven day a week career, yeah. you know, um, uh, there's no way you can, anyone can humanly bring the same energy every day. Like some days it's just like, oh, I, like I just got to fight through it, you know? Yeah. Um, but like, I hope that's never mistaken for like, wow, these fucking ingrateful bastards, you know, like, um, well, ungrateful? That, I don't know. Ungrateful, yeah. Ungrateful bastards. Um, ingrate. Yeah. And ungrateful. But, but that's what I'm saying, like, I feel like I, I, every so often I need, like, if somebody is like, I need help should, doing this, like, potion. need help moving, or like, I need, I, I don't know, like a situation where it's like, hard labor, and it's like an all day thing. Right. I'm, I'm just like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Please, I need that. I need to know, I need, I need to do something that's like, different, and that is very taxing, and just to be like... Cool. I have yeah. it pretty good. I had some of the shittiest jobs ever for for a long time. Oh yeah, I did. I did construction. I did tons of fucking clerk work. I had to fucking yeah solder the same power board over and over for weeks. Data entry. Oh, I got I got fired from a data entry job for being way too high. <laughs> um. Wow. Yeah. Well, it was my own fault. Um. Well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> it was my own fault, but, like, it's my own fault for not doing the, the f like, the masking agent for the drug tests correctly. <laughs> I, like, it, it was the stuff, it was, like, the stuff you drink, um, and it, like, masks the weed in your system. 
And, really? Yeah, and like, but like the idea is like you drink it and then like you pee a bunch of times and it like gets rid of the weed in your system. Um, Does that also like sober you up? Oh, I mean, you're sober when you're. Oh, doing right, right, it. right, yeah. right. Because it's like still in there for a couple days. It's a couple days and it stays in your hair for like 40 days and shit like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or, I mean, that's what I've been told. I don't know the science behind it, but like, um, I drank it, but then I didn't know I was supposed to pee a bunch of times and it's a pee test. So I was like, I probably shouldn't pee. So it was like, it could save all the magic <laughs> for this pee that I'm going to drop in this cup. <laughs> um, so I ended up giving in what they call a hot sample. And uh <laughs> it oh god, it is warm. <laughs> like piss is ninety eight point five degrees. For show. Sure. And um I got a I got I got this call. This was in my Philly days where I was like just home stony playing Morrowind all day every day. Um so I was at home playing Morrowind, mm -hmm. all stone, and I got this call from and it was like a woman in Texas and she was like Hi, this is somebody from Quest Diagnostics. Oh yeah. Uh, Quest. Yeah, we uh we got your uh we got your test results here. Uh, you tested positive for for marijuana. <laughs> and I was like, um, okay, what does that mean? And she was like, thank you, and just hung up like super fast. I was like, whoa, well, I guess I'm fired. This calls for a tasty bong rip. <laughs> and then I just smoked and I played Morrowind for the next three weeks until I got another job. Oh, wow. It was great. It just The job just apparated? Uh, that's when I started... Uh, I got a job at the coffee shop down the street, um, Mug Shots, in Philadelphia, which has since moved to a different location, like further down the street, but mm -hmm. like same owners and everything. And uh, yeah, it was on Fairmount. In Philly, like right across from the whoa, right across from the crazy medieval-looking prison. Don't you dare! Well, I'm gonna do it. Um, drink, drink your popo. <laughs> when you're you. single, like things can be misinterpreted. Oh, I get you. Yeah, so you gotta. But I mean, I feel like immediately you're like, I don't want to touch you with my boner. Yeah, fair enough. But maybe I do. Well, so maybe that's me be being like... inauthentic. I want to touch everything with my boner, including my boner. Well, that's the point. It's going to be very difficult if and you, painful. If you had a boner and you wanted to hug this girl with your boner, then you would have just done it. Oh, fuck, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> you are the love guru. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Love Guru Studies. My name is Aaron. Yeah. Uh, smash cut and then two hours later. If you wanted to touch the girl with your boner, <laughs> you would have just done it, Dan. Uh, oh, man. Look that, deep in your heart. I feel like that could be misconstrued. Uh, with the full knowledge that she would be excited about boner touching. That's that's an important addendum yes. to add there. Yes. That's like That's like my new song. Which apparently is a song written by our friends Jack and Dean that I didn't even know about, so cancel that song I was gonna write. Which song? But my song was called, I like fucking bitches, in parentheses, but only with their consent. <laughs> is that a Jack and Dean song? Uh, apparently they wrote a song that's extremely similar to that. Those so. guys are fucking really funny and awesome. Yeah. That's That reminds me of uh, the Brian... Uh, an SP idea that we've never been able to work, which is uh, rock the night and then in parentheses or day, depending on your availability. <laughs> <laughs> Parenthetical titles They're are the like best. My I remember when we were first coming up with the like the very first Starbomb album, mm -hmm. and it was like late. And oh, I got to tell you something interesting about that story too. Anyway, um, we on were, camera or off camera? On camera. Oh, sweet. We were. Um, we were coming up with titles, and we were all giggly, and, like, every single title was, like, a parenthetical. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But obviously we didn't end up with that. That chair didn't explode. Um, but the cool thing about that night is, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I've told a couple other people this, is, um, that's the night where I knew that, um, if, if, like, John ever got sick or, like, wanted to leave the show or anything, I was going to like be like, hey, Dan, you should be on the show. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. Because I was like, man, this chemistry is great. Yeah, we we immediately fucking giggled like idiots from the day we met each other. Yeah.
the, the Eric Andre show, I, I'm sure it's not for everybody, but to me, it's one of the most consistently fucking insanely hilarious things I've ever seen. From what you've showed me, it is very hilarious. God damn. He just really, he goes all out. And like whenever he's like losing his mind and destroying his set, like sometimes like his nose will be bleeding or like his hands will be cut up. I'm like, God damn, this dude, he's fucking really wrecking himself for the sake of comedy. Oh, yeah. I, I actually built a rag doll out of newspapers and duct tape so I wouldn't have to do any of that shit. Yeah, for sure. Is she going to give me the blood now? Nope. All right. Waste of time. Have I ever told you uh, one of my favorite things about the ragdoll dummy from uh, the Ninja Sex Party videos? Danikin? Danikin. Dan Danikin Skywalker. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's that it was, it was made in 2008, and it's still somehow hanging in there. Um, but the newspapers it was stuffed with are all from 2008. Uh -huh. So, like, sometimes when, like, we hit it with a car or whatever and it, like, explodes, like, newspapers that, like, that say, like, Obama elected go, like, flying everywhere. <laughs> I'm like, this is great. It's like a, it's like the world's stupidest time capsule. <laughs> <laughs> the world's stupidest time capsule. Come on, give, give Danikin more credit than that. Yeah, absolutely. He's a handsome mannequin. They, aw. Yeah. He's based off of you. He is. How He's, could he not be? He actually him? is in the shape of my body. I had to uh, wind duct tape all around myself oh, to shit. create it. And then people were like, oh, you remember that thing that you said when you were 26? Oh, that sure. is recorded in Infamy Forever and is one of the most popular episodes of Game Room? Do you remember that? People Wait a still, second. People still make fun of me because of that tweet that I made. Which one was that? In like 2001, I was like, if I ever make a Let's Play, kill me. Oh, is that, did you really? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so, um... People still reply to it, and they're like, <laughs> Idiot! Hypocrite! <laughs> and it's like, I, you know I've publicly acknowledged that tweet like a million times. Yeah, yeah. So, what made you change your mind, uh, to become a hypocrite? <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, I've always been a hypocrite. <laughs> right. It's just, uh... I don't know. I just thought it would be fun. And honestly, I think you know, you've stayed times. completely true, because you do a Let's Play, and after almost every game group session, you're like, <laughs> fucking kill, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> yeah, you fucking, That's you've it. totally That's stayed true to your word. <laughs> <laughs> never in my life have I said that more than starting oh, to do God, yes. <laughs> Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that really makes me feel... <laughs> Warm and fuzzy inside. It's probably because I, uh... It's probably because I didn't... I, I, I was... I, I was in one of my moods before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the panel. Right, right before Aaron goes on stage, he's like, you have your head in your hands, and, and like, a guy comes up to you, and he's like, <laughs> Hey, man, can I get you anything? <laughs> it, it, what'd you say? Uh, like, I'd like a high tree and <laughs> yeah, a noose. A noose and a dramatic tree. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy came over to me afterwards and he was like, is Aaron, is Aaron okay? Like, and I was like, yeah, he, when he's like this, just leave him alone. He'll just give him some space. He'll be fine. <laughs> I just like to imagine what's going on in that guy's mind when like he, he experiences that. And then I go on stage and I'm like, woo, hey, everybody. <laughs> like, like, he's living a lie. <laughs> well, no, that's the funny thing. Cause like you, you. You force yourself to be like that for like three seconds, and then you hear the crowd and you see them, and you're like, "Oh, now you're." And I actually am energized, but like, yeah, that, that was it was very funny to watch you to go through that. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. You're pretty much my champion. You're my special dude. People, uh, people like to be like, "Oh man, Aaron's he's." Oh man, he must be so depressed or something. I've, I've always been like that. Yeah, no, like I remember the years and years I've been like I've, I've I've been like oh man, I just I just I don't care. I just, I just whatever. Well, there are times like I, I hope this isn't like saying too much, but like I remember when we came back from a convention years ago. I won't say which one, but like you didn't get to enjoy yourself because it was just too crazy and you had too much businessy stuff to do and you were really upset and on the drive to the airport we're all in the car together and like you were like really quiet and like your eyes were like wide open and you were like <laughs> staring out at nothing and I was like 
dude, you're all right. And just like got no response whatsoever. Like not even like a blink. You're just like somewhere else. And I looked at Susie and I was like, is this, is this all right? And she was like, he's totally fine. Just give him some time. And, <laughs> and that was when we didn't know each other as well. And now, now I've become the, he's totally fine. Don't even worry about it guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you, buddy. It's gonna be all right. Oh man, yeah. Whenever I see those headphones on, I'm just like, mm. <laughs> guess I'll talk to him in an hour. <laughs> see you later, babies. All right, next time. <laughs>